Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have the final upgrade guide for the Doctor Who Precons. We're running Masters of Evil, featuring Davros, Dalek Creator, and forcing our opponents to make some villainous choices. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode and maybe even earn yourself a little shout out in one of our future videos. Speaking of which, today's episode is dedicated to DI Records and their founder, Dakota. DI Records is an independent record label with an emphasis on quality music, mental health, and suicide prevention. There's a link in the description below for you to check them out and all the awesome work that they do. DI Records, you rock. Our commander is focused on dealing at least three damage to each opponent each turn to force villainous choices on them, where we either gain a card or they're forced to discard a card. That being said, some of the cards in our deck just weren't vibing with that strategy and stepped aside to make room for cards that were better synergizing with our plans. So what didn't make the cut? Topping the list is Cybership, which is an 8-8 vehicle for 6 mana that requires a crew of 4, and honestly it's that crew cost that broke the card for me. Had the crew cost been a mere 3, meaning that most of our creatures and more importantly our Daleks that we create could crew it on their own, it would be great. But between the high cost relative to most of our deck, and the crew being enough to often require two creatures, it just isn't going to make it here. Day of the Moon follows up that ship and leans into the sub-theme of the deck, which is goading our opponent's creatures. Goad is a fine mechanic, but doesn't force those villainous choices we care about since the damage isn't being dealt on our turn. I think this card could definitely find some, like nice spots and goad focus decks, but the fact that it's, you know, a limited time effect also makes it a little weaker than other enchantments in the same vein. Feed the Swarm is up next and was definitely a tough cut. Life is a resource, but we really aren't gaining a ton back in this stack, and we have more than enough creature removal in the deck after this one's gone. Our enchantment removal is a bit lacking, but with this basically being the only piece that was in the deck, it clearly wasn't a priority for it. Laser Screwdriver is a 3 cost mana rock with a few extra abilities slapped on that I just don't think we care about. Tapping an artifact could be useful in some instances, basically forcing an opponent to use a mana rock early or lose it, uh, but it's just not as an effective tool as we'd like to see. Surveil would be nice if we had more graveyard recursion, but again it's just not a major focus of this deck, and last up is that goat effect, which again like, is a good effect, but doesn't help us push forward our commander's abilities since the damage is going to be dealt on other people's turns, and also paying 4 mana to go to one creature for like a turn, eh. The master formed a new follows up our handy dandy tool and is a weird clone spell. We exile the creature that we control and have him ETB as a copy but that only happens on cast and not on like him just ETBing on his own. Uh, they don't even come back when he leaves, just seems a little odd. This is another card that I have to question if I'm just like missing something with it. What do you guys think? The Master isn't done being pushed onto the sidelines just yet though. The Master Mesmerist leans further into the goad mechanic, though he does get buffed each time a skulking creature hits an opponent. Again, goading is a fine mechanic, but isn't helping us trigger our commander, and we could only really target creatures our opponents control. I think it would be a little stronger if we could also target our own with that effect. Up next we have Toymaker's Trap. For 3 mana we could wait a turn and have a 1 in 5 chance of getting nothing. It's a slow gamble that I'm just not really willing to make. The odds, you know, keep going up in our opponent's favor the longer this stays in the field. But if it lasts, you know, more than 2 turns, it does kind of pay for itself. But just, it, it doesn't feel strong enough. Following that trap card we have Time Reaper which is a 4-4 Hasty Flyer for 5 that could gain us life if we happen to be playing against an Exile deck. Uh, if you're playing in a Commander pod, where it's specifically a lot of these, you know, Doctor Who precons, you're going to see it happen a lot. Uh, but if it's just like a random pod at your LGS, I think we could find better 5-drop creatures. Vizlor, Curlo, would have us pay 4 mana to give away a creature and offer up card advantage to opponent. Uh, sure, they, you know, take damage put to the cards in hand when they do this, but I don't really feel like that's a huge downside. We, of course, could keep it for ourselves, but the stats just don't really justify playing them. 
So our only redeeming quality is the extra card advantage, and in a deck that, you know, gained life and spent life, I could definitely see them getting to stick around. But, you know, I don't think we're gonna consistently dump our hand. Last up on the chopping block is Zygon Infiltrator, which is another weird clone spell. It uses stun counters to become a copy of a creature for two turns. So not bad, but again, you know, it's not really leaning into that three damage to everyone strategy that we're looking for. But of course, with those 10 cards out, we need to have 10 cards in. Topping that list is Court of Ambition, which lets us become the Monarch, but more importantly, forces our opponents to discard a card or lose three life. If we're the Monarch, they have to discard two cards or lose six life. This powerful enchantment plays right into our strategy of controlling their hand and life totals all at once. If they refuse to discard at our upkeep, they'll be faced with a villainous choice at the end step, and if they do discard a card, we have other ways of getting that damage in. Up next is Lithiform Engine. Why have one villainous choice when we could have two, or just copy some spells? This is a flexible artifact, and it's going to produce a ton of value for doubling up triggers and copying spells. I feel like I recommend it in a lot of decks, and so moving forward, I'm going to try and, like, at the very least, steer away from it in, like, the main um, deck upgrades. Maybe have as, like, an honorable mention, because I do feel like it's kind of an evergreen card. But, you know, yeah. Unlike the last upgrade guide, our slingable spells have been modified, and unlicensed disintegration is going to let us destroy any creature and deal 3 damage to its controller for 3 mana at instant speed. If someone flashed in a blocker we weren't expecting, or just has a powerful creature on board that we want to get rid of, we could just pop it like that and force our favorite choice on them. Maestro's Charm is an instant that we're running with today. It has a few modes, making it really flexible, but the only one that we really care about is that each opponent loses 3 life and we gain 3 life. If we fail to get through with damage on our turn, you know, we're going to force that villainous choice on each opponent anyways. Slugstorm follows up the charm of our last spell and is here to deal 3 damage to everyone. Sure, we'll be taking a hit off that as well, but it's a small price to pay for either a ton of card advantage or thinning our opponent's hands while gaining a new Dalek. Flame Rift is up next and is hitting each player for four, so a slightly stronger version of Slagstorm, without the choice of, like, modes, but it also costs one less mana, so we're okay with it. We're looking to force that villainous choice on our opponents every single turn, and cards like this are going to help us get there. Speaking of forcing that choice, we have Blood Tithe, which is going to force 3 life away from each opponent and give it all to us. We're once again forcing that villainous choice and building a board state all at once. This time we gain the life that uh, all of our opponents lost, which should offset some of the self-inflicted damage that we've already seen from cards added. It's time for creatures, and we're topping that list with Tectonic Giant. He has a flexible on attack slash how dare you target me trigger, which will let us deal 3 damage to each opponent, or, you know, gain even more card advantage with some impulse draw. Sig River Cutthroat is up next and is giving us even more card advantage for playing the strategy we already want to play. At each end step, if an opponent lost 3 or more life, we get to draw a card. This is where the goad that we left in the deck could come in handy, but we're almost always going to get this on our own end step. Last up, the Golden Nightmare of the deck. Loyal Subordinate. Loyal Subordinate was made for this deck. If it and our commander are both on the field at the beginning of combat, each opponent loses 3 life, and we are guaranteed to trigger that villainous choice and the Sig River Cutthroat at our end step. Chef's Kiss. They're also super inexpensive to pick up. This is like a 40 cent card. If you've picked up, you know, Masters of Evil and you don't have a Loyal Subordinate, you know, definitely just, like, pop over to your friendly local game store. They should have copies. If they don't, super cheap online. Like, cannot give this card enough praise for this deck specifically. Of course, as always, this is a budget upgrade guide, and so some cards just didn't make the cut. And we're also limited to 10 cards, so just, you know, not everything that fit the theme could just be included. So starting off that list is Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. This Planeswalker adds big discounts to our Planeswalkers and creatures, giving them affinity for artifacts. 
and you could use this plus two ability to deal damage to each opponent and gain us some life based on the number of artifacts we control. Sitting at $18 is a little on the higher end for the budget, you know, for a single card, but would make a great addition to the deck. Up next, this guy blows the entire budget out of the water, but it's Dockside Extortionist, sitting at $80, which is more than what I paid for the deck that he came in. He's going to give us a ton of treasures and let us play all of our big spells way ahead of curve. Obviously super powerful, kind of evergreen in red decks. But the fact that he gives out a lot of treasures kind of like fits our artifact theme. Following up the Extortionist is the Marionette Master. If we were more focused on generating clues or treasures or really any kind of artifact that we could sack at instant speed, she'd be really powerful in this deck and could prove to be useful still if an artifact creature of ours died on attacking, you know, allowing us to sling four damage to a target opponent. Mishra claimed by Gex follows her up and has her opponents lose life based on the number of attacking creatures. With the myriad triggers on a few of our other creatures in the deck, we could easily see the opponents lose three life each, triggering our commander. Last up, and working in tandem with the Marionette Master who we've already mentioned, is Mishra Eminent One, who creates token copies of our non-creature artifacts and forces us to sack them at the end step. He boosts how many attacking creatures we have, and works particularly well with copies of Commander Sphere since we could sack it in response to unfavorable blocks, or even just post damage to get a little bit of extra card advantage. That's the upgrade guide, where the cards that I cut that you think should have stayed, cards that I added that you don't think belong. No Doctor Who decks are left to go over, but we do have the uh, new Ixalan stuff to um, start hitting next week. Uh, but as always, you know, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you want help putting your own decks or just to sling some spells over on Spell Table with me, consider joining the Discord. And until next time, good luck with your builds.